Obviously, the end of episode five into episode six are really big for you and your character. Just kind of walk me through the changes you had to make uh, to kind of where your character is at now. For me, you know, Matt, there were people keep asking about, did you know about where your character was going, that you were going to be a butterfly from the start? And I actually did. You know, they let me know right at the start. But I, I believe in playing things moment to moment and not playing an arc, you know, because that's how we live life. We don't know what's happening two weeks down the road. So if, if there are, if there were any hints to the fact I was a butterfly, it was going to be in the writing, never in my performance. So for me, it was great to play Mern as that taciturn team leader, driven with a dark past, no nonsense. That was just so much fun to play, especially opposite these, this apple dumpling gang of, of a crew but it did mean that as the reveal was coming close and actually when the reveal just happens and then you know bleeding into episode six where I explain myself that it was a real gift for me as an actor to know that was coming especially the more I sat on it in the preceding episodes um, because we pretty much shot things in order so it was great to have that knowledge as sort of the furnace driving me but not revealing it till I had to so that all the uh, the outpouring of the what happens in episode six could happen when it happened as opposed to drip feeding it throughout which wouldn't have been interesting as an actor well something else fun I think that all of you got to do is that dance number at the beginning <laughs> I got to hear about it. I mean, first of all, was it hard to learn the dance? And second, how hard was it to keep a straight face? First question, yes, it was hard to do the dance because it, it's, it's quite, you know, rigid and keeping the form. And Carissa, choreographer, was just amazing. And we didn't have that much time with her. So only a couple of sessions. So a lot of, I drove my wife crazy practicing at home, you know, this weird dance. And secondly, um, yes, it was hard to keep a straight face. I'm not going to lie. It, was, it wasn't easy to keep a straight face. But, you know, we knew that a straight face with those movements, with wigwam playing in a James Gunn show is exactly what it needed. A straight, so we committed to it. But there's, there's blooper reels out there, you know, with us cracking up. Lots of them. You know? <laughs> Hope we get to see those someday, possibly. Yeah. yeah. You possibly. probably will. You probably will. <laughs> Good. Well, obviously the story just changed. So, you know, we've got this butterfly infestation coming now. You've also, mm. um, you know, Chris's dad, Peacemaker's dad, kind of finally taking up this big, bad mantle. You know, we finally mm. saw episode six. I mean, where do you guys go from here? You've got all this over here and all this over here. You've got quite the challenge in front of you. And just two more episodes to do it in. Um, there is, is a challenge, but it's, you know, one thing you can't say about this show is that it's a slow burn. It is, it's full on, you know, full throttle. And um, it will be that till the end, till the end of episode eight. And it, I can say stuff gets resolved. So it's not like you're, you're left going, oh, we couldn't do it. Stuff needs to be sorted out and it will be in the next two episodes. And where it goes is very to surprising places. I would use that word surprising. Uh, typical of James Gunn is in the midst of chaos, incredible heart, you know, like he always does that. He always surprises you with the humanity. That's gonna come to the forefront as well as just rip roaring chaos. <laughs> so all that's gonna happen. It sort of has to happen to resolve all this, these issues, doesn't it, you know? Well, talk about your guys' group dynamic. I mean, John C. just insane in this show, but then anything he's really done before. And your guys' yeah. group, you guys seem like a good group, you know, close-knit. I know you guys got your issues. Um, but yeah. Just talk about working with John and working with the group uh, in this project. It's, it was, I'm, I'm not doing this for the sake of, of, of uh, you know, sound bites. It was a true joy working with everyone here. People really wanted to be there wanted to be there for james and james is i think when he chooses a group together you see it in guardians as well as this is he really does want people that you want to be around and want to be around each other and so with all the laughter you can imagine that was going on it was it was criminal to be paid for what i was doing coming into work sometimes and it was infectious because the whole crew felt that way because as you might know 
those guys in the crew with the grips and whatever, those are the hard guys to like impress. You know, they've been there, done it all, seen it all, working long hours, but they were all laughing and getting into the fun of it. James was cracking up, you know, and and I think it 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 made it a really fun shoot to do because it was also, you know, in COVID and whatever, it wasn't easy. But the laughter, which is my favorite sound in the world that existed on every day of work, made it really fun. And we we have a, a group text thing, you know, with you know, that group of 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 people because we we were genuinely fond of each other and you know, uh is still very much in touch, you know. Every comic book TV show outlet out there was saying, you know, Peacemaker is likely to get a season two. What are your mm. thoughts on that? Are you hoping it happens? Absolutely. I mean, the story, there's so much more to the development and evolution of <laughs> Peacemaker, you know, to go. And the reception has been so wonderful that, yes, why not? I, I you know, I think the world wants more of it, you know, and we certainly do. So, um there's, and there's so much more fun to be had and chaos to be, you know, caused. So, yes, my answer is yes to all of that, you know. Good. And you mentioned background. Are we going to see any more background uh, when it comes to the butterflies, where they come from, stuff like that? Is that going to be dove into in episode seven or eight at all? I think there'll be some more highlights and, and more more of a chance to know certainly where Mern is coming from, where they're coming from, their side of the story which is very interesting in, in bigger issues we're dealing with in the world right now. So yes, the answer is yes, there will be um, more background stuff, um, but it's very much about the present. But uh, James has this wonderful way of writing, of using the background to propel the story forward rather than to take you back and keep you there. So the answer is that there will be a, some more background stuff, but the story has to be resolved as we talked about in the next two episodes also. So it's a nice balance of both. All right, great. Well, I think that's probably all the time we have, but it was awesome hearing from you. Thank you, Matt. It was great talking to you, too. Thanks for taking the time.